Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, June 7th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time 2024. A massive eruption just occurred off of the sun. Good news is most of it is headed away from Earth, an M9.7 solar flare from AR3697. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. It's boom time. Large hail, significant damaging winds, and tornadoes target the Central Plains on Friday. Good evening, everyone. As we are now well into June, we are starting to see more severe weather spread out in different parts of the U.S. as we approach summer. Friday's severe weather outlook shows uh, a central U.S. bullseye here, and we'll move it through for you through the week. Saturday, it dips down into Nebraska and eastern Colorado. And by Sunday, fun day, very low level severe weather, which is good news as blistering heat waves continues in the West and it's set to stretch into the weekend and could break more records. The records aren't being shattered. They're just, they're just being equaled, which is normal activity for this time of year. Let's talk about some of the records that were broken here and where were they? In Texas, San Angelo reached its daily high on Tuesday when temperatures reached 111 degrees. Across California, multiple cities broke daily records this week, including Santa Rosa, Palmdale in L.A. County, and Bishop, all with temperatures well into the triple digits. In California, Friday's heat is expected to scorch eastern San Diego County with dangerously hot conditions and temperatures as high as 108 degrees. According to the National Weather Service, meteorologists also warned of temperatures between 105 and 111 in Tucson, Arizona. Meanwhile, Las Vegas could reach temperatures between 107 and 114, tying the record yesterday at 111. You may hear that major hurricanes, tropical cyclones around the world are becoming more frequent. This is just the fear-mongering from the mainstream, and it couldn't be further from the truth. It is not true. In fact, here you're looking at all of the global major hurricane frequencies, a three-year running sums all the way back to 1982. Who knew? We had a peak in 94 we had a peak in 05, and we had a peak in 2017. This is all due to El Ninos and the warming of the oceans and has nothing to do with you or CO2. Who knew? Now you do. Here's the full forecast. Heat continues in the southwest U.S., severe thunderstorms in the central plains. Dangerous hot conditions will continue across portions of the interior of California, the Great Basin specifically, and the southwest today and, well, into tomorrow and the next day. Elevated fire weather conditions and a few dry thunderstorms are possible over parts of southwestern U.S. today. We saw this cloudy condition move through today with tons of uh Storm clouds, it got dark, but you could see the rain evaporating before it hit the surface. These are terrible conditions where any single spark in these cloudy conditions, spark a fire, and it's boom time. So heed the warning. Don't flick your cigarette butts out of the window. Severe thunderstorms and excessive rainfall are possible across the central and southern high plains as well today, and that will continue into tomorrow, but diminish as the weekend continues. Click on your county for more information. You can see that that heat dome is limited to the, only the areas where it is always hot in the summer. What a bummer. Quick look at the GFS model. We'll move it through three hours from now. We're going to see an explosion of activity on the state line of Iowa and Nebraska that will quickly drop south southern Iowa and diminish by morning secondary storm here maybe showing up later in the weekend will diminish by Sunday and that will be a fun day that's low level activity but the real threat is coming in just a few hours here as these storms explode over Nebraska and Iowa in just a few hours heed the warnings worldwide volcano news update before we get to that let's take a look at seismicity Seismic update. Quick look at the map shows low-level activity worldwide. 
We do have a slight uptick on the west coast of the U.S., Otherwise, not much going on. 4.3 here off the coast in the transition zone, but worldwide low-level activity. Take a look at this, a 2.5 in Georgia. <laughs> I'm sure a couple people felt that and were wondering what was going on. Worldwide Volcano News for Friday, the 7th of June. Marapi to 11,000 feet, seven kai to 25,000. Madapi puffing at 11, Samakai to 25. We said that twice now. Samaru, who knew? Now you do. 14,000 foot puff. Nevado de Ruiz, 19,000 foot puff. Fuego, 13. Liwa Tobi, 8,000 foot puff today. Continuous week emissions at Samakai to 22. Samaru to 14. Liwa Tobi, explosive activity continues to 8,000 feet. Madapi, 11. Liwa Tobi to 9. They keep repeating, Fuego to 15, San Cristobal, new volcano on the list, volcanic cloud observed. That's all they say there. And that wraps up Worldwide Volcano News for Saturday, June 7th into the 8th. Space weather is heating up, AR3697, more affectionately known as 3664, the bringer of the superstorm of May 2024. Just produced a near X flare, M9.7, moderate duration, peaking at 149 UTC with a massive plasma outburst headed away from Earth. Good news there. Modeling won't be available till morning, so stay tuned for more updates as we get them. Here, the image is courtesy of Go16 Suvi. Because the event took place towards the southwest limb, it should be mostly directed away from Earth as we experienced a low-level geomagnetic storm just 12 hours ago, and there could be some latent aurora in the forecast. Let's see what just occurred. Well, it certainly looks like a CME passage as everything is spiking here on uh, around 12 hours ago, but the phi angle did shift prior to that, but the BZ and all of the telemetry jump at the same time. So this is a transient CME, apparently we missed. Perhaps a weak transient passage detected this morning at 10.50 UTC. The solar wind speed increased by 50 kilometers per second. It wasn't much. Let's go back over there and watch this. Just above 500 kilometers per second. Nothing special, but indeed did produce a geomagnetic storm. And this type of spike in event from low-level activity has everything to do with the weakening magnetosphere and the fact that we are in an ongoing magnetic excursion, which is rapidly decreasing. We've been warning the public on the channel about what happens during these events, and Lee and I will be covering this in extent on our radio show in just a few hours. So go over there, stay tuned for some updates as we talk about the topic, and we'll get to it in just a moment. Space elevators could get us to Mars in record time. And Japan is planning one for 2050. <clears throat> a space elevator could make it much cheaper and faster to get goods to other planets. The idea of them actually existing is a fantasy, but we will see the future is rapidly approaching. The Obayashi Corporation, based in Japan, announced in 2012 plans to begin building one by next year. That was over a decade ago, and we reported on it on the channel, I think eight years ago. Not only will it cost $100 billion, there are huge technological and organizational challenges to do this. The space elevator would be from the surface of the planet up into space, using some type of nanotubes or something. Be like a conveyor belt. Uh, I don't believe in the feasibility of this at all, but the future is rapidly approaching as this singularity should get here in just six years. That means we will know everything in less than a decade. Very scary. Humans and Neanderthals only had sex for a brief period. Lee and I will talk about this tomorrow on the radio show, but is still fundamentally changed our DNA. It wasn't just a few years. We had sex for over 7,000 years. Can you imagine how many sexual encounters occur over 7,000 years on Earth? Well, if you can't, We'll reveal all the details tomorrow on Revolution Radio Studio B, 12 noon Mountain Time. Cosmic Catastrophe is the show, and we replay the video version 
on Magnetic Reversal News, 8 p.m. Mountain Time. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm and buy seeds from our affiliate. Not only are they the cheapest seeds on earth, but they may hedge your bets in a future that is uncertain. The Alliance of Native Seed Keepers, all heirloom vegetable seeds, open pollinated. You're able to seed save these, make your own land race, and hedge your bets. This is one of the most important preparedness tools you can be buying. Not just gold and silver, not just bullets and butter in a can, but you could also be buying seeds. Most seeds, if you keep them in a cool, dry environment in the dark, can last three decades. We're talking about hundreds of varieties of open pollinated seeds at the lowest price in the world. $2 per pack, buy $25 or more free shipping. Add coupon code ORP2024 and save an additional 10%. And there's no other boom better than that. Go get them. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Get the seed.